Hello everyone, praise the Lord. Welcome to the New Bethel uh, YouTube page. Welcome to Sunday School again. Um, hope everyone's doing well. I want to say happy Father's Day to all the fathers who are doing the diligent work of leading their children, leading their families, who are teaching them, guiding them, uh, teaching them wisdom and understanding of God and biblical principles. So um, I want to say happy Father's Day. God bless all the fathers. I uh, pray that God keeps you and that you continue to do what you're doing because we need you fathers. We need fathers um, in the world. Speaking of fathers, um, again, we will be coming out of the book of uh, Proverbs to uh, discuss wisdom. And um, of course, you know, you probably know that uh, the book of Proverbs was written as a um, largely as a father writing to his son, giving him wisdom and instruction so that he can have a good life, so that he can uh, be wise and and be able to take the things that he's learned and apply it so that he doesn't have to go through unnecessary troubles. You're gonna go through uh, challenges and struggles in life, but there are some things that we don't have to go through if we live wisely. And so that's the point of, of Proverbs is to help us understand the mind of God so that uh, he can help guide us in the things that we're going to face. So as we talked about last time, the book of Proverbs is personified as a woman who's going out crying into the streets and she's trying to get people to understand, listen, I have wisdom and I want to give it to you. I have understanding, I have knowledge, I have instruction, and I wanna help you live a prosperous, good life. I'm not asking you to live a broke, poor, busted life. I'm saying I have a life for you that is awesome and incredible, but you have to listen. So that is the point of this brilliant woman who's trying to get us to understand that is what wisdom is being personified as, as a woman, as a teacher, who's trying to help us understand. And so she's crying out, trying to give us instruction and knowledge. Uh, but not only that, wisdom is one of the attributes of God, meaning it is one of God's divine traits. It has to do with what makes him God. The Bible even talks about how uh, God used wisdom. Through his wisdom, he created the universe. He created the entire universe. Wisdom said, I was there when God formed uh, the skies, when he formed the oceans. He, When he did those things, he did it through his wisdom. We also talked about the fear of the Lord and what does that mean? Um, and if, if you look into the, the biblical context of the fear of the Lord, we understand that it, that is the beginning of knowledge. That is the beginning of wisdom where we begin to understand his mind and the things that he has set in place and the things that he has set in order. We begin to understand his standard of morality, what he has defined as good and evil. And so when we fear the Lord, have a, a healthy uh, respect, a healthy awe, the acknowledgement of who God is, we begin to understand God's mind and how he would have us to walk wisely through this world so that we can walk along the path of righteousness. So as we get into the lesson, I want you to keep those things in mind. Um, we're going to talk about the gifts of wisdom, okay? The gifts of wisdom out of Proverbs chapter 8, verses 8 through 21, all right? I want to ask you, what do you value? What do you place much value on. Now, when we understand the de definition of value, value essentially means the some the worth of something. How much is something worth? How much value do you put on certain things? Um, when I think about what our lives are largely built on, especially here in America, our whole life essentially is built upon money. When we really break things down, money seems to run everything. It seems to run the world, where it even seems to run justice in, in, in so many ways, where if you can bribe the judge or you know do certain things behind closed doors to uh, influence people's thoughts, to influence people's decisions, justice can be completely subverted. We have to understand how much value we put on certain things because it begins to change our our moral worldview or our, our, our understanding of what good is. And we begin to, 
change our minds on certain things because of what money has to say about it. But <clears throat> I think this lesson is going to uh, bring up what what does wisdom have to say about it? What does God's wisdom have to say about uh, the decisions we should make? And how much value should we put upon that wisdom rather than um, our money? So as we go through the text, Proverbs chapter 8, verse 8, uh, starting at verse 8 says, All the words of my mouth are in righteousness. There is nothing forward or perverse in them. They are all plain to them that understandeth and right to them that find knowledge. Receive my instruction and not silver and knowledge rather than of choice gold. Okay, so what I want us to understand here is that wisdom is, is making a, a claim that she's trustworthy. She says, all the words of my mouth are in righteousness. There's nothing, she, there's nothing perverse. There's nothing crooked or there's nothing sideways about what I'm trying to tell you. My words are straight. And I want you to understand that wisdom is trying to get us to trust her so that we do not um, fear the things that she has to say. Also, wisdom trying to, is trying to get us to trust her because of the claims that she's about to make. Those being that receive my instruction, not silver or and knowledge rather than choice gold for wisdom. Verse 11 is better than rubies and all things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. So wisdom is trying to get us to understand that she's trustworthy and that with her stance on her trustworthiness, we are to put our value towards her instruction rather than put our value towards choice gold, money, and the things that seem to shine and glisten in our lives. She's saying wisdom is so much more value. In fact, you cannot compare it to those things. So we have to listen to wisdom, okay? So let's break down verse uh, 10 and 11. Receive my instruction and not silver and knowledge rather than choice gold for wisdom is better than rubies and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. Do you believe what she's saying here? She's saying my wisdom is better than money. Any type of money, any type of, of choice, a uh, gem, any type of shiny jewelry that you try to uh, put value upon. She's saying my wisdom is better. Do you can do you believe that? Do you actually believe these claims that she make that she's making? Because I think that is the difference between who we understand as our actual teacher. Are we allowing money to influence our decisions or are we going to allow the wisdom of God to influence our decisions? I know we have a house, we have a car, you have to pay bills, you have to, to pay for gas. And you might be well, can wisdom do those things for me? Can wisdom buy, can wisdom pay the rent? Can wisdom buy you food? Um, can it purchase you a house? You might think the answer is no, but in fact, yes. If foolishness can take these things away, wisdom can put you on the path to the things that God has for you because there are gifts and rewards to having wisdom. Not saying that God is gonna bless you with a house because you're, wisdom, because you're wise, but what I am saying is that God has a divine order in which he is willing to bless us when we are obedient. And part of being wise is being obedient to his word and he will take care of us when we are obedient to him. He will secure us in his arms when we are obedient to him. We, we, gotta, we have to understand that wisdom gives us almost a superpower when it comes to good judgment and sense. Wisdom helps us to make the right decisions in obedience to God. Remember, God is, he, he's the giver of gifts. He's the father of lights. He wants to bless us. And when we, when we shape our lives around wisdom, around God's wisdom, it can even, it can lead us to wealth. And I'm not just talking about physical wealth, but the wealth of life, 
the wealth of God's uh, presence, the wealth of his favor, his grace and his mercy upon us, the wealth of even of good judgment and, and justice to where we begin to have, we, we won't have the answers to everything, but we will have the answers to, to certain issues. And that is our, our job as the church. And so wisdom makes the claim that her wisdom, her, her knowledge, her instruction is better than rubies, than silver, than gold. And that we should not even compare. There should not even be a close comparison between the two. We have to put value and um, worth onto wisdom because which is going to last longer, your money or the wisdom of God? So as we look at verses 12 through 14, it says, I wisdom dwell with prudence and find out knowledge of witty inventions. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy. And the evil way and the forward mouth I do hate. Counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. So what is wisdom saying here? In verse 12, wisdom is, is essentially saying that she covers all bases with her thoughts. Wisdom is so much more transcendent than money is. There are only certain things that money can can do there are only certain things that money can help with there are some things that only wisdom can answer there are some things that only wisdom can benefit us in situations have you ever been in a situation in life where it didn't really matter how much money was in it was involved in it, it wouldn't matter how much money you could throw at the situation you, you needed you needed a a sound word or you needed someone to to be there with um, a word of encouragement or you need, you just needed someone to listen that is the value of wisdom something that can bring comfort and peace something that can can bring understanding and and thought so wisdom can stretch much further than money can because money is only bound to the the physical realm of this world but wisdom stretches even to the spiritual and the mental parts of us that need attention wisdom also says that i have strength she says i'm not just brains i'm not just about thinking i actually have strength and remember what i said earlier about god created the universe through his knowledge you, you you've heard the quote knowledge is power it literally is even through god's divine power he can change things in our life through wisdom wisdom is not all about how much we can conjure up certain thoughts and conjure up certain um, conceptions but it actually has the power to change things in our lives and it's not about our ability to change things but it's about through god's ability to change things even through us uh, through his wisdom and then it also mentions uh, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. So last time we heard that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But here we're hearing that the fear of the Lord is to hate evil, to hate pride and arrogancy and the evil way. So what is this saying? This is the one place where it's saying what the fear of the Lord isn't. The fear of the Lord is not associated with evil. It's not associated with, with things, anything that is a degree less than God's goodness, than his perfection. It is the fear of the Lord, not only to love what is good, but to hate what is evil, to be against it. It's not enough to just be, to love what is good, but you have to be against, you have to be uh almost antagonistic to the thing to the evil things of the world we can't be chummy with the things that god hates it's not about um being against people it's about being against the the entity the the evil thoughts the evil ways the evil actions that's what we want to be against and i think that even ties into what we're going through with um, the social justices and injustices of today is that it's not enough to just to you know say how much you you love black people or say how much you you know you care about um, 
you know, the, the African American community and colored people and all that stuff, that's nice, but what are you gonna do to combat the evil uh, racist things that are going on, the prejudices and all, all these crazy things? It's not enough to say, to talk about what you like, but you gotta talk about what you dislike in order to, for there to be any type of change, okay? Can't be indifferent towards it, but you have to work against it. So verses 17 through 19, I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. Riches and honor are with me, yea, durable riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold, yea, than fine gold, my revenue than choice silver. So what is wisdom saying here? She says, I love those that love me. I, I want those that are seeking me. I think this is this is important to hear because wisdom is not trying to be elusive and it's not trying to, it's not, wisdom is not some sage hiding out in the mountains waiting for this one person to find them so that they can teach them. No, wisdom is seeking to be sought. It, it wants you to find, she wants you to find her. It's not trying to hide, it's not trying to hide behind uh, any type of wall or hide any secret any type of secret place she wants to be found because there is value there is worth there are rewards in finding wisdom and she says if you seek her you will find her she claims even to have riches and honor now this speaks more more than just economic riches more than just monetary gifts and rewards Yes, I believe we can see, receive those things through the fruit of wisdom. But what is even greater is the riches in glory, the riches of righteousness, the riches that God has for us. Not even when we get to heaven, but even some of the residual things that we can receive on earth from God's glory and his righteousness and his salvation, the blessings that he will bestow upon us, the spiritual blessings. And he's rich in those things. And so wisdom is saying she has a higher form of wealth, not just money. Yes, you can be blessed with money, but she wants to give you a form of wealth that is eternal, that will last forever, that will bless us in this life and in the life to come. So these are the gifts of wisdom that we can receive God's righteousness. We can be put on the path of righteousness way beyond the reach of natural money, way beyond the reach of silver and gold, way beyond the reach of, of riches and treasures. But this goes into eternity so that we can see the fruit of God's righteousness forever. So finally, verses 20 and 21, she says, I lead in the way of righteousness in the midst of the path of judgment, that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance and I will find their treasures. So wisdom makes another strong claim here that as an attribute of God, wisdom, she provides for our good in the long run. See, the difference between wisdom and riches and treasures and money is that wisdom is alive in a sense. Wisdom is intentional. Imagine, I literally imagine wisdom as the woman that the, that the Proverbs depicts her as. Wisdom is personal and she wants to lead us. And not, not only does she want to lead us, she wants to be a part of our journey. She wants to be personal with us. She wants us to commune with her so that there is an exchange, so that we grow. It's almost like a relationship. Be acquainted with wisdom. Follow wisdom along the path of righteousness. Follow wisdom along the path of, of judgment or justice, okay? Um, we will ultimately be blessed with an inheritance that is not necessarily the riches of natural gain, but these riches will not fade away. These treasures will not rust, they will not be crept upon, they will not be stolen, but these riches will be eternal. So how much better is it to seek wisdom rather than just money, rather than just treasure, where we will tend to build our foundation. We build our whole life 
upon a budget. We build our whole life upon a career. We build our whole life upon the things that money can purchase, the things that money can buy. But how about we put our, our whole trust, our whole foundation up on wisdom? For the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, the beginning of wisdom. So if we only, if we only seek money to provide for us, to, to lead us along certain paths in life, we'll, we'll die in it. And we'll, we'll die and leave money possibly even for our, our children and our children's children. But what about your inheritance that you're going to uh, receive with God? I want us to understand that our wisdom goes much further than money. The wisdom of God goes much further than money and that it has eternal precedence. So if we seek wisdom that leads to the righteous knowledge of Jesus Christ, we will have everlasting life. And so with that, I conclude uh, the lesson. I pray you have been blessed. I, I just want, um, if there's anything that you walk away with, especially young people, because the book of Proverbs, it, it, it is primarily um, tuned for young people to be, able, to be able to receive the knowledge and the wisdom from someone who was older, who's been through some things, who's made mistakes, who wants you to understand, listen, don't make the same mistakes I make. I've, 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 I've seen things, I've, I've been through things. Let me help you live a good life from an earlier point so that you can live out your purpose, so that you can understand what it is to walk in uh, righteousness, to walk in God's path of righteousness, to walk in his path of goodness so that we can live a blessed life so that we can receive the gifts that wisdom has to offer. All right. So um, I'll, I'll end this lesson with a quick prayer and then we will have a happy Father's Day. Uh, Father God, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your grace, your mercy. Lord, we thank you for your wisdom um, that you've allowed us to have access to. We thank you, Lord, and we pray that you um, endow us with your wisdom so that we can understand your mind, so that we can understand your moral law, so that we can uh, be led down the path of righteousness, so that we can live a good life that you would have us to live, so that we can be successful in our lives in order to please you, God. We bless you. I pray, Lord, that you bless every father today on this Father's Day. I pray that you encourage those who even fear to be fathers to, to step up to the role, God, and not be afraid, because it is a, a privilege to be a father, to be able to teach our, ch our children uh, wisdom and understanding that um, is ultimately about you. Lord, we bless your name and give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless.